In the last video, some people were really triggered by what I said about stateful widget. Namely, that it sucks. So let's talk about it. First, let's see what the difference is between stateful and stateless widgets. Geeks for Geeks says, State is the information that can be read synchronously when the widget is built and might change during the lifetime of the widget. Basically, if we have a button that we want its color changed when it's clicked, for a stateful widget, we would have a state that holds a variable of type color. In the onTap function of that button, we would invoke the function setState and in a callback, update the color. If you want to do that with a stateless widget, well, you can't. But if you write a production application, you would only have stateless widget. Okay, mostly stateless widgets. So why do we use this seemingly unintuitive way rather than just using the default from Flutter? Even though it might not be obvious here, with this channel, I'm trying to show people what real word Flutter is like, rather than tutorial hell. I'm not gonna have the most beginner-friendly takes here, and I think that's fine for the people that want to move away from the beginner title. And if you subscribe to that idea, I hope you know what to do with the channel. So what I'm seeing here is, let's use alternatives. State management alternatives, to be more precise. Like block, river pod, provider, or whatever. Whichever one you choose to use is a matter of preference, because all of them use stateful widget at their core. I'm not saying stateful widget is bad, just its API, which doesn't allow you to use it in larger projects. Why? Well, let's see. Would you use stateful widget for a checkbox? Well, depends. If you only care about that checkbox itself, knowing its value, yes, you would. But if you want anything else or anyone else to know its value, well, I think you'll think twice. For example, in a settings menu, a checkbox that allows notifications for your application. Do you want that checkbox to set its own value whenever a user clicks on it and only then report to the notification service that tells you if you have notification permissions Taking it instantly, or you would like the second scenario, where the user clicks on the checkbox, the view model requests the update of the notification preferences, check or request notification permissions, and if and only if everything goes well, update the state in the view model and update the checkbox. I really hope that the obvious answer is the second one. And the explanation is very simple. You want to use the tools that help you most in architecting your project. Why is architecture important? Well, do you want to make three screens or a production application? As I said here, I'm talking about production applications. If the answer is the latter, then minimal architecture is necessary. Even if you use a CLI to generate everything for you. Stateful widget really gets in the way of creating a nice architecture for your project because there is a lot of lifting up state necessary. Lifting up state is a concept that is really simple, but uh, kind of hard to exemplify. Something I actually tried to do in the first video of my series, Flutter What's Next, which I'm gonna have as my first link near the like button. Why would you use stateful widget then? Well, you would use it at first while learning about Flutter because that's the default, of course. Why? Again, because that's the default. You don't know anything about importing libraries yet. And I'm only half joking here. There are some situations when you would use stateful widget, mostly when you're doing animations and uh, you have to use a ticker or to encapsulate a small animation on a widget. That's fine as well. But anyway, don't let me tell you what to do. Thanks for watching. I need a like. Bye.